I'd now like to invite up onto stage uh, Brenislava. Where's Brenislava? Over here. No wonder I can't see you over there. Okay. And you're going to talk today about growing and succeeding as a challenger in a market. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hola, everyone. Uh, my name is Brana. I'm one of the founders and uh, co-owners of Inspira Group, which is a parent company of Chaterizida, which is a real estate platform uh, running in uh, Serbia. So I will be telling you a little bit our path as a challenger in real estate market, uh, starting with a little bit information on who we are and what the market in Serbia is. And we will be talking about our way, our steps on the way to top and of course troubles and challenges. So um, what is Inspira Group? As you can see, we have a lot of uh, platforms and websites. We were founded in year 2000. We were back then students all. So we were actually pioneers in digitalizing classified market, uh, in markets in Serbia. And uh, so far we have uh, businesses in uh, uh, two, um, two niches, classifieds, where we are leaders in jobs, in cars, and we are semi-leader in real estate. I will explain that a little bit later. And we have e-commerce websites. Uh, we are leaders in insurance, car parts, tires, and similar. So the whole group has around 300 people, and it is majority owned by founders, and we have Alma Media from Finland as a minority partner. As for Chaterizida, um, well, we acquired it back uh, 2017. So uh, back then it was really a small website, some fifth, sixth position, something like that. And um, since then it grew up to be number one in whole Serbia except Belgrade. In Belgrade, which is the capital city, we hold the number two position at the moment, but we are growing and going forward to the number one. Uh, it's a classic um, uh, classified model, we run a subscription model, and our team is around 30, 30 people now. Um, as for the real estate market in uh, Serbia, well, you should know that uh, it's a small country, so around 7 million people. The whole real estate market was valued last year at around some 7.5, 7.6 billion euros, with around 140,000 transactions. Um, as for the agents, who are majority of our clients, they take around three to four percent of uh, commission, and of course, some part of that goes goes to us. Um, our market is currently um, very divided, the classified market, and there are a lot of players uh, since we came and started shaking the, the market. So in Belgrade, we still have a current market leader, which is a general classified website. They've been around for 25 years, starting from print and then moving online. And we are number, number two. As for the rest of Serbia, so Chetrizida, we are the leader, and we have others following, plus a lot of local websites that we had to deal on the, on the way. Um, we have uh, two bigger players, uh, two websites which are backed by big media companies, so they have this media machine running uh, um, behind them. And as you can see, in a market of this size, it really pays off to be well, actually, number one and uh, number two can also be, be profitable. But in a market of this size, um, number three, four, and uh, the rest really cannot grow to become big, big businesses. So our goal is really pretty much clear. Um, so what were the stays on the way to top? Um, I would stay, say, uh, start with something that uh, people uh, forget. And that's the, I uh, purpose, in, intentionally said it's uh, zero, it's the basis. It's the leader mentality that you need as a challenger. You need to believe that you are a leader and that you are leading people somewhere they want to go. Um, it was actually a problem when I came to Chaterizida in 2019 because at that time we were already some player number three or something, but you cannot move forward with the team which has the mentality of a third player. <laughs> because they go out in the field, they go to clients, and the clients tell them, oh, but 
the other guys are better, you are not as good, and things like that. So uh, your team is thinking, but we are not as good. If every initiative comes to um, a response, but we are not as good, they are better, we cannot do this and we cannot do that. So it's a really uh, a challenge. And um, actually we solved it by um, setting a strategy uh, and um, understanding that we are a leader already. Because after all, who is the leader? Usually people say it's just the market leader. Okay, that's true. And he's the market leader taking most finances of the market at the moment. But generally, leaders are those people and those businesses who are taking you to a better future, to a better market, those who are bringing value to the market and uh, to you as a client as, as, and as a user. So we start in the building mentality showing that we are those, we are the leaders, and we are taking the market to a better, better future. And I will show you how we did it, actually. And that's, uh, that's changed really a lot when uh, our people realize that um, when you're starting as a leader, you don't have so many followers because people don't recognize you at the beginning of your path. But then when you uh, get more and more results, you get more and more uh, followers and you will get more market recognition and eventually you end up as a market leader. Um, also, the thing is that you need to think different from the current leader. Um, and that's, that was interesting for us because I also come from a company where we were pioneers, we run leading businesses in the, in the market. But you need to have different approach, different strategy and different mentality when you are a challenger. It's not the same strategy. Um, leaders also have a lot of defense strategy. Uh, as a challenger, you cannot be so defensive. You must think much more on the attacking side. Um, so, um, yeah, it's, it's not the same. Uh, you need to have both systematic thinking, but a lot of creating thinking and the hack mentality. How do we pass this? How do we surpass this, this problem? Um, then, of course, you need the right strategy. I, I, I'm sure you know, all know that. And our strategy for the first years, until recently, were, it was, okay, we did the analysis, so um, the, the market leader had Belgrade as its bastion. Uh, so it was the, the, the toughest battle to, to win. So we said, okay, we'll take whole rest of Serbia first, because they didn't pay so much attention there. They were number one there but they didn't pay so much attention. It was our path. <laughs> uh, and actually, we used that time, these couple of years of becoming number one, uh, to improve the product on our way to being number one, to grow income and to become more financially stable because to win Belgrade, you need finances. And to form a more mature team which can lead, uh, uh, lead this business on this way. And yes, so we did it. <laughs> we finished 2021 as number one in the rest of Serbia, and then we focused on income, income growth. Um, so, um, but uh, the, the, the strategy also was based on, on competitive advantages, because how are you going to become number one in the rest of Serbia? You need to have something better than the than rest of the players. And we had to cover the basics, the core functionalities of, of the website, and then come to competitive advantages. And uh, sometimes people think that it's really easy to have core functionalities on, on a top level, but it takes time. <laughs> it takes time and energy to build it. It doesn't come just like, like this. And as for competitive advantages, we did a lot of the things that maybe you did in Western Europe or more mature markets, but in Serbia, when we started, none of this existed, or it existed but on a really low, low level. So we did pricing trends, comparisons, price estimates, evaluations, loan insurance information. We created tools for people. Should I buy or should I rent with this loan or recommendation tools, call forwarding. Uh, so all this technological stuff that didn't exist in Serbian market so far. 
But on the other hand, we also focused a lot on the human attention because our market is still very much offline on the agency side and the developer side. So there's a lot of space to, to digital, di digitalize it, but people need this human intention and one of, the, uh, one of our competitive advantages is actually field sales, is actually very good customer support, uh, which builds the trust that has been mentioned so much uh, before in the presentations. Um, and of course, when you have a strategy, um, yeah, you need it, but in the end, you need to make it true, and it needs tactics. Um, and uh, one of the very important things when you're a challenger is spotting opportunities and moving fast in those, in those cases, which can be hard if you come from a bigger, bigger systems and leader uh, mentality. So I'm sure about, you know about these uh, old things and uh, that it's important. And for us, for example, it was the examples were in Corona times where everybody and our competitors was, they were concerned about keeping the money. We did uh, something different. We approached our clients and said, okay, these are hard times. We will be in pain and you will be in pain. So let's share the pain. And actually we got very, very many, very much points just by that, that approach and finding solutions together how we can help each other. Then of course, when other competitors had some problems with the website, immediately we pushed the marketing, immediately we were overtaking users, but it needs an instant, instant reaction. Uh, then for example, we saw that there was opportunity on the developer's market. Um, um, their presentations weren't the, so, so good uh, uh, in Serbia, so we formed a, a partnership with Homesters back then, and uh, we used it as a, a third-party third uh, software solution uh, to get time to market and to give something better for our clients, and actually we have uh, the most of the developer presentations in, in Serbia so far in every city, even in Belgrade. So generally, that was the, the, those were the most important uh, steps on, uh, on our way. But we had a lot of problems and, and challenges, and some of them were, well, with limited re development resources, uh, mostly concerning IT, mostly concerning uh, product development, especially with the uh, raise of the prices uh, of those. It took years really to develop core functionalities at the level of the other competitors or the, or the former leader. Um, then actually, I think we lost approximately two years in setting the right strategy, in moving away from bootstrapping, because bootstrapping was what we knew <laughs> previously, but it wasn't the right strategy here. In forming the right team, forming the management, uh, it, all takes, it all takes time when you are moving into a new market. Then it, there was an interesting uh, fact. You know, before we started, we came to the market, um, there were two players, number one and number two, and they really coexisted well together. So the market was kind of a still. But then we started pushing and we shook the market and we started shaking the leader. So an interesting fact was that when everybody else saw that we are shaking the leader, they wanted a part of it. So actually, by doing our job, well, we invited more competition. So we got new competitors from other big companies, and also the older competitors got new ambitions because something is happening now. So <laughs> it's not what we planned, but it's what we got, uh, but it's, it was actually showing us that we are doing a good job. Um, it takes time, persistence, and it takes time, of course, uh, investment. Um, so sometimes you need to choose whether you're going to grow, sometimes you need to, uh, need to choose whether you're going to grow finances and slow the growth of, the, uh, of your market share. Um, yeah, um, it's, not, it's not as easy always to make that uh, decision. And I think you know that uh, overtaking a leader who's been present for a long time isn't generally easy. And this is a good example of this. Um, um, our newer competitor, actually we're the one with a big media uh, machine behind them, they came into the market with a plan to start charging after one year of freemium. Well, it took them actually three years to start charging just some 
additional services, so not everything. Three years for just some additional services. So uh, with all these things happening in the market and all, all those players, it's really not that easy to come in and start making, start making money. So generally, um, my conclusion would be that uh, you should choose your better battles wisely, really. When you're uh, thinking about entering a market as a challenger, thinking about whether you have a good strategy, whether you really have competitive ad advantages to win with, and whether you have the persistence to do it. And there is one thing that people overlook uh, a lot, and that is the power of habit. And there is a book uh, with this title, uh, written by Charles Dohig. And I couldn't find exactly the, the, the quote to put it here, but uh, the point is, the power of habit is really strong if somebody was there before you decades, uh, for decades, you know? Um, so you can create great tools and, and bring value, but uh, creating and changing habits of people is actually the hardest things to, thing to do. So uh, people think if I'm better, uh, then I will become number one easily. But actually what this book says, um, and I can confirm it from my <laughs> experience here, is that you should be multiple times better in order for people to be willing to to change their habit, because generally people like the things to be as they are. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> it is, it is a lot. But it pays off if you know what you're doing. So um, that would be generally my experience, and I would like to hear your questions now. Thank you. Brian, thank you. Very Brianna, thank you very much for that. Um, while people are writing some questions, so okay. bring them up here, please be fantastic. Um, let's start with, with the most obvious. I'll start where you ended off there, actually, mm -hmm. about changing habits. Yeah. I mean, you were number six or like yeah. long way, yeah, way, long way, way, way down long here, way. right? In the market. Okay. And you had people who had been in the market, number one, for an extended period of time. Mm. So they had created the habits. Exactly. Okay. What were the two or three things that really worked for you to break the old habits and create new ones? Um, actually, it was the uh, first, first one was pricing trends. That was the pain point, uh, pain point, because in order to know what the price is good, you needed to go to the agency and then ask multiple agents and then you depend on what they say to you. So the, the market wasn't transparent at all in Serbia, you know, and we brought, actually we brought transparency. It was one of, one of the, the first uh, things that brought people to us, yeah. Okay, so, and, and in bringing price transparency, um, how, do you, how do you monetize that? Because you talked about the freemium models and how that, mm. you know, they start off with the objective in one year to yeah, make yeah. money and yeah. three years later they're making yeah. a little bit of yeah, money. Yeah, exactly. Um, what was the model that you brought to the market to give that pricing transparency, but actually earn revenue along the way? Yeah. Actually, we don't charge those, those things. We, we also give uh, home valuations to, to uh, sellers and uh, owners for free, um, all in order just to, to bring more, more, more um, visitorship to our website. But uh, actually, we grow with income a, a lot. We started, of course, we started on, on a low level, but in... Um, last five years, we've grown six times in, in revenue. We grow 40 to 50 percent year on year each each year. Um, we do it um, in different ways. Um, of course, uh, up sales and and uh, growing in number of, of agents. Then we created income from developers. Uh, now we're creating income from private sellers. Uh, then we created income from. Um, loans and insurance, so yeah, <laughs> we take all of that in uh, account, but uh, we don't charge the, uh, the visitors. Okay, yeah. now you've demonstrated the ability to go from number six to number one in the market, except yeah. for Belgrade, number yeah. two, yeah, yeah. and you're working on better. that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you've demonstrated it can be done. Yeah, exactly. So what's going to stop someone doing that to you? Uh, well, this knowledge <laughs> yeah. that we have, um, we as a group run leading websites and we have this knowledge of how to grow as a challenger. So actually, um, 
we, uh, we are running both the defensive strategy and both the very aggressive strategy. Uh, what I see uh, in, in uh, leading, um, leading players it, uh, is that uh, they tend to uh, be afraid of some things. Uh, for example, when we put those um, pricing trends and comparisons on the ad, uh, other players in the region that I talk to who are, who are leading players at the moment, they're very afraid to do that because what would their clients say? And as a challenger, I really didn't care about it. I cared, but it was something that I needed, uh, needed to do. So I think you need to be uh, brave. Okay, because what's interesting is when you look around the world, who were the market leaders 10 years ago, 15, even 20 years ago? Many of them are still market leaders today. Yeah. And there are very few stories of going from number six or five or four, doesn't matter, mm -hmm. to, to number yeah. one. Yeah. Um, Immobiliare in Italy is a good example of that, having taken over Casa, having owned Casa at that point. It's a story I'll have to tell people later of how they did it. Um, what's interesting, some questions here though. What's your forecast for the Serbian property market for the next three to five years? Well, Rather specific question. Yeah. Well, next year we be thinking won't grow that much because of this inflation, stagflation, and everything going on. But uh, after that, I think it will be booming. Actually, what we saw in previous years what, uh, was that developments were booming a lot. There was a, a lot of uh, investment money coming into the developments in, in Serbia. So, so here's, here's an interesting one. Aren't you afraid of big foreign portals coming into your country? Aviv said uh, this morning that they can launch into a new country in a matter of weeks. Oh. Well, we've been there with jobs and cars and a lot, and we've had a lot of offers to be bought and, and things like that. So far, no, none of those uh, big, bigger players made it. Um, there's a one thing that um, sometimes Serbia is just not as interesting to, to bigger players. Um, and the other thing is that we've uh, did a lot into going deeply into, into our niche and knowing the market and creating uh, relationships, relationships. I said uh, a lot of our market is still offline. That means that you cannot just take it away only by technology at this point. What... Um Where's the question gone? Okay, what's it going to take for you to win the last little bit in Belgrade? Yeah. Uh, well, some bases, <laughs> some bases like like better uh, SEO and and we'll work on on uh, more brand awareness. Uh, but also, we will need to create some competitive advantages specifically for for Belgrade. Yeah. Okay. But what I like about the approach you took was a lot of people think about I've got to win a country. Yeah. I've got to dominate every part of that country, because if I dominate, then I win. Yeah. But what they sometimes forget is that you only have to win the most valuable parts of the country. And sometimes you've got to think about the stepping stones to get there. You don't have to win everything, just where the money is and the value is. And I think about um, when I was at REA in Australia, we, we always knew that Domain was very strong in Sydney, yeah. and if we took them head on in that market, it was going to be a very hard battle. Exactly. We will spend a lot of money. And you might even lose. Yeah, you might lose. <laughs> yeah. But there was another attractive market north of them in mm. Queensland where they were not playing. Mm. And so we could win that market. So sometimes even the most glittering, all that glitters is not gold, as mm. they say. Exactly. So I think when you think about winning the Belgrade market, is there anything, you know, do you have to win it and still be super successful to be successful in Serbia? Or can you actually be number two there and be number one everywhere else and be actually super successful? Uh, we can be profitable as, as number two, but we wouldn't be satisfied with that. <laughs> okay. And then last question is, um, what, is the, what was the main product feature from the, to form new habits that gave the most impact and allowed you know, XY times better than the, the, the current, the horizontal competitor? What was the main product feature to form new habits? The, the, the most top impact? question there. Was it this... Um, free analysis. Yeah, yeah. First, uh, as I said, the, the first thing was this uh, giving transparency all about, all about prices because that was really a it was a pain point. And then we added other stuff like loan offers, you know, because in Serbia most people cannot buy uh, buy a house without loans. So um, yeah, that was the next thing that that we the, that we added and uh, that that was better. And of course, uh, we did one thing, and we uh, we have the the biggest database of ads in Serbia. That's also very it's it's a core thing, but uh, it's very important.
Fantastic. Brian, I like what you guys are doing in the thank Serbian you. market. Thank you very much for sharing your journey and experience today. You're welcome. Great. Thank, thank you. you very much. Okay.